So, um, two years ago, we uh, hosted our first annual conference. It was actually our second event. Uh, it was a few months following a, an event we did in Brussels. Um, yeah, I think it was really quite an important milestone for us. Um, one of the key reasons was it was the first time I met my good friend Itzik, um, of course you've heard from earlier. And this was, I think, the first time where we really spoke about what the objectives of IR were um, and how IR could be used as a platform to actually change the industry, change the perspective of the industry. And uh, I think really where we also spoke about how we go about this in, I think, which everyone would agree is traditionally quite a rigid, serious, sort of traditional uh, kind of marketplace. So I'd like to think we've come a, a long way since then and uh, at least hope that at the end of this presentation, or in fact the end of the event itself, um, you get a far better understanding of the direction we're moving in uh, and you really feel excited to be part of this development and change in the sector. So when I say change in perspective, um, what is it IR wants to achieve? Well, initially we want to show businesses the alternative to the traditional big four, the magic circle, the global law firm model, to show the better quality, the better service which is available. Uh, and I think this is very key. The second is to create a brand, uh, to create a network which is actually renowned for its innovation, for its forward thinking, for creative solutions, uh, for being very sort of modern and cutting edge. And third, which I think is very important in comparison with other associations or networks, is a community which is equal amongst us all. No matter what the size of your firm, how long you've been a member, everyone has equal say in how it develops. They won't just be run by the four or five biggest firms in the group in the, the largest jurisdictions. So, um, moving on, and really what I want to cover in this presentation are two things. So first of all is what we've been doing. So what's been going on behind the scenes. And second of all, what will be happening in the future, so in the next 12 months and beyond. There are going to be a few questions I asked during the process of this presentation. So I'm going to ask you all now to take out your keypads. So um, just to kick this off, um, I'm just going to quickly run through some of the stats as they currently stand in the group. So as you can see, 80 members, uh, sorry, 800 members even, um, across 140 jurisdictions. We mention here that we have 135 chambers ranked firms, for those of you in the legal profession. The reason we highlight this, we're at second only to Lex Monday. We will overtake them in the very near future. Uh, it's possible, actually, when these figures are made, we may even have done so. Uh, and I think what this shows is not just the size of the group we have here, but also really the quality which exists in the group. And then I referred to earlier the different expertise we have here. We cover over 70 different practice areas and sectors. So really, that is an amazing array of different skill sets. Then I'll point you to the top right here. Um, we're averaging over 50,000 hits a month on the website. Obviously, that shows significant uh, viewers. Um, shows us that our marketing is successful, especially through social media, which I'll touch on in a minute. But I think the far more important stat here is the 4 minute 30. And this is the average user time someone spends. If we have 50,000 people who click on and click off, it's worthless. Four and a half minutes on a singular site is a considerable amount of time. So what this tells us is that the content is quality and people are going onto the site for a reason, whether it be to source an advisor, whether it be for the, for the news which you will submit. Then social media, which is one of the big reasons I think we have such successful web statistics. Uh, we are the market leader in the professional services networking field, 25,000 followers. We have various platforms, which I can talk about with you separately. The two key ones I think here are of course LinkedIn, and one which I think is the most important or will be in the coming years is Twitter. So you can see 7,000 plus on LinkedIn and 13,000 on Twitter. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've been doing and where our time, our energy, our investment's been. And I'm going to start this off, actually, um, by going onto our website. And I'd like to show you um, a little bit about the members area. So if you bear with me a second. I hope most of you are semi-familiar with this and have used it to some extent. There's different icons, various tools, resources, member lists, publishing, news, filters, various functionality, which if you need help with, that is why you have a client manager. The thing which I'd like to show you today, though, where a huge amount of our energy has gone into is the new event calendar, which is here, and traveling dates, which is here. So it should load up. The first thing with the event calendar, I'm going to click, quickly click on this event, which we're, we're currently at. And you'll see this is the event page. And you'll see here there's 174 attending members. So there's a few people we 
haven't registered, maybe came in at the end. And I'm sure you'll all recognize some of these names here or been speaking to them earlier today. And the idea behind this is when there are other industry events, whether we're talking the IBA, an accountancy meeting, whatever it may be, is you'll be able to go on, register, and be able to see which of the IR members are there. The obvious point is for them, of course, to arrange private meetings. But there's a lot of inter interesting possibilities. You know, perhaps if there's multiple, you could arrange your own drinks reception meeting, obviously strengthen creating an IR base within other industry events. I would then like to turn your attention to the traveling dates, which is slightly different. Um, you can see to the left here, these are two trips I've made in the last month. So this is my own personal account. But more interesting is you're able to see who's visiting your own country. So one, when you are traveling, you can let the members know you'll be in their local city. And that local member will know exactly when you were there. So Javier, I don't know where you are. Over there. <laughs> so Javier is in my hometown on, I think, next week, is it? Yeah? So of course, I could say to Javier, come on, let's have a beer or let's catch up. And I think this is a really essential part of you know, the whole development of the group. It's great coming to the events, but this continued dialogue, the meeting, the relationships needs to continue. Um, once a year is probably not enough time if you want to do serious business. So I told you a huge amount of effort and money's gone into this. It's a I don't know if we have any web developers, I doubt it, but a complex system which is personalized to every single attendee. So we would like everyone to really start using and really utilizing it. So I'm going to ask you um, just a few questions really relating to this now so we can get a picture of the audience. So my first question is, how, fre how frequently do you travel to different jurisdictions each year? <coughs> For business, of course, not including your beach holidays. OK. So very figures, of course, um, but it is pretty much as I expected. Everyone's reg frequent travelers here. If everybody in this audience uses this each time they travel, where they have got a morning or an afternoon three, make the most of meeting your local members. There's people you met here. There's 200 attendees. There's 800 members in the group. There's a lot of other people you can connect with. Second question, how many industry conferences, so events such as this or the IBA or whatever it may be, do you attend each year? So well, there, we've got one to five, and some people go to 15 plus. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you can't get much work done. <laughs> but again, <laughs> you know, there's going to be a lot of you who are going to the same events. So again, make the most. Let the other guys know in the group which events you're going to. Again, a lot of these big conferences, I'm sure there's thousands of people who go to. It gives you a nice base where you know you have friends going already. Um, and would you be interested in meeting with other IR members uh, whilst you were traveling. Okay, we have one now still. <laughs> okay, uh, so well, we're now going to move to the next slide anyway, um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the client manager role. Um, one of the things which we've talked very serious in the last 12 months is the aspects of not necessarily looking to gain more members or, or increase significantly but to really focus on the value we give to the existing members. Um, and this one way we've done this is we've took on a number of new staff, and this is in the back end. So this is the client manager who we always like to say is you should think of as an additional member of your staff. So whether you want an introduction to another firm, you want advice, um, maybe you've received marketing proposals which you'd like an opinion on, whatever it may be, they're really here to help you. And uh, this is how we can also learn from you exactly what you need. Um, you know, we know, realize that every single firm probably has slightly different reasons for being a member. So we need to know exactly what you want out of the group to make that possible. So I'm going to ask a question relating to this. And um, first of all, has your firm uh, been in communication with your client manager in the last three months? And I don't mean relating to the event. I mean separately about your membership and how you make the most of it. OK. Well, this is a pretty interesting result for me, because I can guarantee every single person in this audience and every person in the group has been contacted twice by your client manager trying to arrange a call to do this. So if you've said no, it's because you haven't responded. Now, we appreciate, of course, that you are busy. 
But um, if you want to make the most of your membership, this is one of the key parts. You know, the members who get the most out of the group are the ones who are in most communication, because, of course, we know what they want. So this actually leads on to um, another question, which is who handles your correspondence with IR? Is it you personally, as a responsible partner, let's say, marketing department, or perhaps an associate, I know PA, support staff? OK. Well, I think this is probably one of the reasons why a lot of you maybe said no, because we appreciate you're very busy people. And this isn't always going to be top of your priorities when you've got clients hounding you and you need to obviously earn your fees. So, OK. <laughs> but uh, the key thing with this is why don't you appoint someone within your office? It doesn't have to be a marketing department, but at least a contact. One of the things I recommend is more junior member of staff, someone who can actually learn more about the global networking side. In fact, it's even a great incentive that if they can bring you benefits and opportunities, maybe you could even bring them to a future IR event. This is one of the benefits which perhaps smaller firms can't always compete with some of the bigger firms and about how do you incentivize your support staff. So just on some sort of general development, some of you maybe have heard that we moved offices this year to um, larger, nicer offices, which are everyone's welcome to come and meet us if you're ever around the Birmingham, Midlands area. I'm not quite sure if it's an upgrade, though, and how many know, but our old offices were the cow shed, uh, and now we're in the piggery. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure if it's an upgrade or not. Um, Dubai, we hosted earlier in the year, which was a huge, huge success, as I'm sure everyone who went there will tell you. We had a, a lot of fun from uh, the desert safari and eating under the Burj Khalifa under the fountains. I even took a couple of friends to uh, a techno party, Stefan and Hannes, <laughs> on the last night. So we had a lot of good, good times. Uh, this event itself was sold out, of course. Um, there's an important point here because, you know, we're always going to limit the numbers with the events. We will, because it has to retain that personal touch. Every event is sold out. Demand, we're sure, is only going to come higher. So just bear it in mind when we do send you information about events. Of course, all members will be treated equally. Uh, so if the tickets are gone, they're, they're gone, of course. And uh, one of the highlights for us this year was we actually also sponsored the Asia Conference for young lawyers. And um, I think there was around five, 600 attendees. Um, there's maybe a few people who attended here today. I know Stephen DeShriver was, I think, uh, where are you, Stephen? There, Stephen uh, was awarded on honorary, honorary membership, right? Yeah? Um, so we're looking all the time for new opportunities with other events, how we can reach out to other people, especially really forward-thinking advisors, lawyers, accountants, and other advisors. Talk about referral activity. Actually, coming up next, you're going to hear from Ross, and we actually have a panel uh, who we've nominated as uh, members of the year, who you'll be hearing from. Referrals are not the only uh, important part of this, but we want you to see, by being an active member of the group, the opportunities which exist. So you're going to be hearing firsthand about some of what's going on and some of the work which is going between jurisdictions. But on a more general note, you know, I'm ecstatic. This year has increased perhaps even fivefold from last year. And I see that as a continuing trend. We do have questions about how we record this, because quite often, uh, one of our members of the year, I, I had no idea about 10 or so cases he actually handled. So one thing I would ask you, if you can, and we're not going to demand this, but is to try and keep us informed. Is it, it's something which we can share with other members. OK, and the last thing, just in the last year, some of you may have seen this, but I actually spent a lot of time putting together a marketing document to help assist you. Um, I'm sure you're probably all being contacted pretty much daily by magazines, awards, directories, and you've probably been contacted probably more than ever since you've become a member of International Referral. And I'll talk to you personally about this if you want to ask questions, but there are a lot of um, organizations which, to put it mildly, you shouldn't trust. Um, I can tell you stories which are shocking, really, people who actually have even copied and pasted content from our website onto their own. <laughs> Um, there's one which I won't name the name here, but they call themselves an official Google partner, which by having a conversation with Google, I know is actually impossible because you have to be a web developer. So there's a lot of lies, a lot of smoke and mirrors. We put this together. I don't want to really be given a blacklist because I'm not sure it's the most ethical for me to tell you where to spend your money, but at least for you to ask the right questions. There's perhaps a few questions where you can weed out who's legitimate and who's not within one email. And I can guarantee if you ask these questions, you'll never hear from them again. <laughs> because they simply can't answer them. So uh, now I just want to have a quick chat about the future. So 2015 events. 
rather than me talk about it, why don't I show you? So we're very, very excited about Shanghai. Um, I can guarantee it will be a sellout event again. Uh, anyone who's been to one of our on-the-road events will know we will do a lot of very fun, very unique new experiences. Um, it's a slightly different style of event, as I've referred to before. Um, this is very much focused on really the relationship building, making deep connections. So um, if you are interested, again, make sure you let us know. Anyone who is here will, of course, have first option, as we feel, of course, it is right to at least reward those who we know are regular attendees first. And um, of course, there'll be the annual conference again, which many of you know is always held in London. Um, so this will be a similar time next year, and we'll try and confirm dates for you as far in advance as we can. The uh, next point here is uh, the practice area committees. So you're all aware, the guys who are wearing the blue uh, bands, they're people who have really put their own time into making the group success and developing various practice areas and building up referrals and communication. Their term actually does end at the end of this year. We will be keeping some on for continuity, as we feel that's important. However, there are going to be various spaces available across nine practice areas to start. And we're also open to looking at other practice areas depending on the interest and the representation in the group. So if you are keen, again, come and have a chat with myself, Ross, or one of the other guys, and we'll be happy to talk through it. Next, um, talk about referrals. Um, we are always looking at new opportunities. A lot of what happens at the moment, of course, is member to member. Um, we're always looking at ways which we can reach out directly to clients. Uh, there's a very interesting opportunity which is going to be touched on actually in the panel session in a moment. But again, we also welcome your views. I've heard some amazing ideas from different people. I know Erdem and Alice set up a Turkish chamber, uh, Turkish and Czech Chamber of Commerce. And then I overheard them talking about doing something very similar with another jurisdiction. You know, these are the ideas which can really raise the exposure of our own different countries and really create something unique. So any ideas, obviously, we're here to support and obviously share what other members are doing as well. Then, um, just to finish off on this, is to talk about new services. Um, the big thing which we're really focused on at the moment is social media. Um, it's actually spoke about its importance for the personal brand. I actually go even a step further in 
that it says a lot about your firm, is how do you want your, your firm, how do you want you to be really perceived? Um, I'm not saying it's a defining factor of why someone would choose to work with you, but me personally, um, when I'm faced with a choice, I always look at the social media. I look at how they portray themselves, the content they deliver. And as you have a younger generation coming through, which are far more tech savvy than even I am, and use social media far more than I do, for these early stage entrepreneurs, you have to have some kind of representation if you want to be viewed as a modern forward thinking firm. The big question we have here, and the, the problem I think, is how do you quantify what you get from it? You know, uh, many of you are obviously relatively small firms. Uh, maybe there's a few and you want to have a specialist digital marketing manager, but is it really worth you investing 20, 30, 40, 50,000 euros plus on a, a specialist just to handle this when you can't see what actual fees come from it? You know, at first probably not but it is important at all the same that you have representation. So what we want to do um, is to bring our expertise, how we've become the market leader, and actually help your firms. Now, we're not gonna run before we can walk. Um, we think it's sensible that we showcase and work with a very select few firms. So similar to what Idsik's doing with his business development, we're only gonna work with 10 firms. Um, and again, first option will be to those in the audience. And what we're willing to do, because effectively what we want to do is in, is utilize you as case studies to actually show all of the members about what we can do. Um, so we're putting the money where our mouth is. And what we're going to do is actually just charge a 50% rate. So what that will mean is 10 hours a month, uh, which would actually only be 250 pounds per month. So a very, very nominal fee just to cover basic time allowance for the staff. But we will give you proven results, reports, and show you growth in followers, content delivery, and in the way your brand is perceived. So if you are interested, as I said, it will be the first 10 firms, so go and speak to the guys on the front desk and uh, register your interest. So I'm just going to ask two questions on this, if I may. Um, first of all, does your firm, in your own opinion, invest enough time and effort into your social media presence currently? Okay. Well, I think those figures speak for themselves. And the uh, second question is really related to what I just said, but it's interesting for me to get a picture of by having so many of you together, is would you potentially like assistance or for IR to review, manage, assist in your content delivery in your social media platforms? And of course, we realize you're all at different stages, so it will all be bespoke. So we should have a new question. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that uh, is reassuring that we know we're providing value and we're doing the right thing. So if you are one of the 72%, there will be an opportunity for everybody. Um, however, for the first three months, uh, we're only looking for 10. So again, let us know. So um, in conclusion, um, I really hope you can see everything which we're trying to do behind the scenes to really give you extra value um, about what we're doing. Really though, of course, the network is only as good as you, the members. However much we do, you need to use these services, you need to use the structure which we put in place. I think, I said this in the welcome, but this starts even from tomorrow with the breakout sessions to really think about how you can collaborate and move forward firms. Great come to the event, but unless you do anything after it, you know, it's a waste of everyone's time. So really think about that. Um, Moving forward, I would really like you to all continue to share your opinions, and I mean the good and especially the bad, because this is how we improve and evolve. Um, we know we still have a long way to go to achieve exactly what we want to do, and we know we'll get there with your help and what you need. Um, and on this note, um, I'm going to pass you back across to Ross, who's going to be hosting the panel discussion with our nominated members of the year. Thank you.